Anatoly, just because we want to make sure you have an opportunity to um, get, you know, like we asked you about the, the bad section. I think that bled into the ugly for Ethereum. But is there anything from your perspective that we haven't talked about that is um, ugly about Ethereum's design choices, value, architecture? I mean, one, one thing we haven't talked Why about. Why is Ethereum fundamentally broken? Yeah, one, I mean, one thing we haven't talked about just to spark things maybe is like r- running a node at home. Like, and uh, it, it seems to me that maybe Solana design decisions do not um, think that that's very valuable at all. We could talk about that, but oh, the floor is open. No, Niel- Nielsen's law takes care of that. Like, I already have one gigabit at home and like my test boxes work fine. Like, I, I think the ugly parts on, on Ethereum are that are not fixable is this focus on ultrasound money and like decentralized money. And this is what pigeons it into a specific direction, which is means you're trying to build the lowest, smallest possible L1. And it's very, very hard to do that and do all the execution on all these L2s and have any value capture on the L1. Uh, execution is what makes money, is when you have priority fees, people competing for content, they want this particular dog coin versus another one, they're willing to pay extra fees to be there first. That's all in the execution layer. That's where all the money's made. And that pays for a normal user that doesn't care about whether they land in this 400 millisecond block or the next one, and they just want to pay for a mobile phone. To that user, they're not, they don't give a shit. Like when they click that pay purchase button, they don't care if it takes extra 400 milliseconds. So they're pre- that, the, their fees are fractions of a penny, right? Does this make sense? This is all because execution is able to capture high average fees and provide a low median fee. That's really, really hard to do in the settlement part. And when you move all the value capture away from the L1, what are you left with? It's just trying to compete with Bitcoin and being the most better money. But that is not like real. It's all, it's a meme. (laughs) Like (laughs) decentralized money, like I agree is is important. When my parents fled the Soviet Union, had these technologies existed, they would have preferred USDT on Tron versus Bitcoin or Ethereum. And there's no way you could convince them that, hey, you're going to take this massive move and flee this country, that if you take Ethereum, it's going to be within 90% of the value that you put in within a year. Because the variability and all this other shit makes it a a much riskier bet. Um, So like, you need stable coins for normal people. So like, once you accept that, like, as the thing, this like decentralized money meme is like is like puts you into design decisions that are all kind of like ruin the the cool part of the network, which is like execution can pay for super super fast cheap stablecoin payments. Justin, I want to get you to respond to that, and then uh, we'll end with closing thoughts from from each of you. So, uh, what how do you respond to um, uh, what Anatoly said about the ugly of Ethereum? So Anatoly is right that um, there is no money to be made, no value to be captured in the settlement of execution, which is just verifying a snark. But there is uh, this other part of settlement, which is data. And it turns out that data scales linearly. You know, snarks are magic. This is exponential scaling where you can take arbitrarily large computation and shrink it down to a single snark. You cannot do that with, with, with data, like every user needs to consume a certain number of bytes. Um, now, one of the things that Anatoly said is that we're trying to build the smallest chain possible so that we can extract the highest fees. That is, that is completely wrong, right? We have a whole roadmap of scaling and it's not about per transaction fees being, being high. We actually want per transaction fees to be low. It's about the product of the number of transactions times the median or the average uh, transaction. So we want to have 10 million transactions per second, each of which are paying a, a, a tiny fraction of a penny, but in aggregate, that could be hundreds of millions of but dollars to per the, day. To the L1, they're just paying for data, right? That is correct. To the L1, they're just paying for data, yes. And data is a commodity. Like There's no way the L1 can charge more than a small multiple off the cost of bandwidth. Okay, so... Right? Let's say so that we like have a validator and they're on like the best connection that, that, are, that is available to them, you know, from their home or whatever 64 it is. 64 cents a terabyte. 
that's that's the cost of data. To not everywhere, but like that's the cost that I can get, and it's going to be everywhere within a couple of years. You cannot put the whole internet on the one internet connection. Like that's just not going to no, work. No, sure, we no, sure. But like today, today I can get sixty-four cents per terabyte. Within ten years, the world is going to be below that, and my price is going to be yeah, even lower. But there's this notion called induced demand. Like this is the guy who said, you know, whatever, like a hundred kilobytes of, of memory is going to be sufficient for the whole world. Like you need to project into the future. Today, we might only be doing 10 transactions a second, but you know, in the future, we might but, have our personal AIs do, you know, millions of transactions <laughs> per second on our behalf. But like if and the, so the we're data never going to be able to fit everything on a single internet connection. The more resources we have, the more we want to consume. <laughs> okay. But like the data portion is not, uh, it's opaque. It has no content-based pricing, no time-based pricing. It is just pure commodity throughput. So pure the congestion. L1, as the L1 cannot charge more than a constant factor off the physical cost of it, because if it charges a hundred X off the off the cost of the physical access, somebody's going to build. <laughs> this is like there is again, there is a again, reason is why weak. Ethereum data availability is worth more than Solana's data availability because, because of, network, of network, effects. network effects. Yes, this notion of shared security, this notion of synchronous composability. Of, because of the economic security. Not just that, but also <laughs> access to TVL, access to applications. There's only one ENS in the world, right? There's this only a, one Ethereum and internet this is, name system. This is really weak. This is, this is why I think it's ugly and it's not fixable, is it's not a fundamentally hard thing. I thought we agreed that synchronicity is important. If you're on a yeah. separate chain and then suddenly you become asynchronous relative to all the, the applications that are, that are living in the other chain. Sure. But and like so if you the, pay a premium for synchronicity and, and, and composability. If the Ethereum, I mean, like, if its main purpose is to charge for L2 data, this is how it, it's going to end up it's going to be very, very hard to capture value, like real value capture. All the stuff you're talking about is very hand wavy because you can't like do cash flow analysis on it like Apple. I build this phone for X, I sell it for Y, right? Like maybe it, maybe it has value, maybe not. I don't know, but it's, it's it wobbly to me. Like if you're charging just for data, there's a fixed amount cap that you can charge for it because if you charge 100X on the cost of data, it's just open to competitors. Like there's just no way you can run a business that r runs a hundred X cost on a commodity service, like just providing data. Celestia or whoever else will, will eat your lunch and they'll be like, this is the better place for L2s. It's just going to be downward spiral. So this is like the hard part. I don't know if it's fixable. It's, it's easy for me to like argue how an execution layer will survive and work. Justin, brief comment on that, and then let's get to closing. So yeah. what's your brief comment on what right. Anatoly just said? Fundamentally, we're going to be limited by bandwidth. Even though it grows exponentially, we always want to consume more. That is the nature of humanity. And we can't put all the internet of value, every single transaction, through one you know, home internet connection or even one data center internet connection. So fundamentally, there's going to be congestion. And why is there going to be congestion? because everyone is going to be willing to use this prime resource, which gives us network effects, gives us access to liquidity, gives us access so to security. So you're expecting that the Ethereum L1 will have blob congestion? 100%. Yes. Like right now, the, so there's no blob be, congestion. So it's going to be under spec'd for its demand? No, we're going to have as much as we can, but even that's not going to be enough. <laughs> I think you're overstating demand. I, my, my guess is that the top 100,000 transactions per second will cover 99.99999% of value. On the, underestimating the you know, demand is like saying there's only demand for five computers in the world. No, no, that's there's not true. There's going to be way more transactions <laughs> than you expect. We're going to um, have go bots Google and does... AIs and... Yeah, again, you're you're talking about science fiction future stuff instead of looking at a current data. Google does about forty to eighty thousand searches per second. That is a single global application 
that is scaled to every human and permeated their lives. That is 80,000 events There's per second. There's always new applications. Every time we've 10x <laughs> bandwidth, we've unlocked new applications. You know, we've gone from text For content, to, to images sure. to videos. But not not like transaction events. Uh, so so there there are many <laughs> points of difference throughout this conversation, and I've I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, everything I, that's I, been said. I pray said. my competitors build for a world with infinite demand. <laughs> that is as bad as uh, overestimating demand is as bad as underestimating. Well, if you enjoyed all of that, then you'll absolutely love the Bankless newsletter. Join over three hundred thousand fellow readers, all for free. Click below to sign up.